Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here today. Glad to have all of you. And, uh, you know, we're pretty fortunate here. We have some really good music people. Uh, Opportunity to be 
gentle, the opportunity to be kind, the opportunity to love. I thank you for what the Holy Spirit can do in all of our hearts and lives. And I pray that that portion of the Spirit just radiates in our hearts. That when we leave this place, we are not the same as we came in. And help me to preach with power, with passion, with boldness, and help me to do it in a way that pleases you, and help me to do it as if I would never, ever get to do it again. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is the whole idea, this, this world being uh, tumultuous, this world being in turmoil, uh, people not having peace, people not knowing what to do because it's economic, not knowing what to do because it's relational, not knowing what to do because they just don't know what to do. There's just an inter-groaning that's happening in their lives and they just, they just can't get away from it. But God wants us to have peace, perfect peace, actually. In Isaiah 26, 3, the Amplified, it says, You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both in its inclination and its character, is stayed on you. Because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. Why, then, are so many people in turmoil? Why, then, are so many people in trouble? Why are, is there so much chaos? Why is there so much drama? Why all the drama? From baby mama to baby daddy. <laughs> And every place in between. I mean, if I started spilling out all the family things that I know about, even in my own family, it would curl your hair. <laughs> because it's just unadulterated drama. For which all of us, unless you're just the weirdest person on the face of the earth, or a sadist, you don't like drama. I don't want it. Unless you just enjoy pain and you just enjoy watching somebody suffer, unless you just enjoy uh, inflicting this kind of stuff, nobody wants drama in their house, in their job, in their family, anywhere. I want peace. Yeah. And to go along with it a little quiet. <laughs> Thumbs up for the quiet, right? Sometimes God places things in our path to begin to stir all this stuff up. To begin not to tempt us, not to upset us, but to get us to realize that, hey, I get upset over things that I shouldn't be upset about. Why? I'm getting upset over things that just aren't worth it. I'm upset over things that I can't even control. Mm. I'm mad about something that doesn't God is trying to say, why? Why do you take yourself to this place? Why do you do this? Why have you come to this place? There was a woman who was going to do some speaking, and as she was going to this, uh, on this trip, late to the airport, long line, luggage, the whole bit, had all kinds of stuff, some, some, all the different kinds of equipment for speaking and even for music and all these different things, uh, having to take the, the uh, uh, luggage uh, through the x-ray and then running late already, uh, they began to take the, the bags and all this stuff and they were checking them for bomb residue and all this kind of stuff, doing everything and she began to, to get frustrated and she began to not have peace. She began to lose it a little bit. She began to not want to, to deal with it in a correct way. Sometimes you and I go on trips and we go and do things, or maybe we're at our job, or maybe it's a, a family dinner, or, or maybe it's just family whatever, and there is just an abundance of circumstances that come our way that get us upset and cause us to lose our peace. Time and time again, we come upon this, and, and, and we might even say out loud, I'm not, not going to get upset, I'm not, not going to do it, I'm not going to lose it, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And yet we turn around and we get upset anyway. And we, be, 
begin to lose the joy and the peace that can be so ever abundant in our, our lives if we would just stay out of stuff long enough. If we would just stay away from stuff that doesn't belong to us. This isn't ours. Do you know that the children of Israel took every city that God gave them when they went to the promised land? Do you know why? Because God won the victories. Mm -hmm. Well, they were out there in the battle. They were having to do it. But God was doing the victories. Why do you and I overcome all these things? Not the fact that we're just sitting in, uh, on the sidelines and God's doing everything. No. We're actually in the battle and getting involved in what God
so very important. What you think about God, what you think about His Son. Oh, I realize that it's already been done, that God has already done it, that God has already worked out salvation, it's, uh, the plan has already been fulfilled, all those things are happening. But it's so very important about what you think. Because I'm telling you, you look at anybody, you follow their lives, and what they think is exactly how they live. I don't live another way that I don't think. I live exactly the way I think. The way I think is how I live. So it's so important that you and I think right, that we think straight, that we think so.
fruits of the Spirit. He wants us to have self-control. He wants us to, to live. And, and He wants us to, to live with these things. Far too often, we just lose our bananas because something doesn't go our way. And we flip our lid. And peace is nowhere to be found because we cannot control our reactions to things. And it's things that you can't change. I've worked for a company for 15 years. My bosses are the same today as they were 15 years ago. And sometimes I absolutely want to punch myself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? I would just be hurting myself. Because I can't do anything about them. But I can do about me. And how I react to them being dumb. <laughs> Some of that kind of stuff. And so 
She proceeded to explain more and more detail why they weren't allowed to smell the lotions. And this woman could feel the animosity start to build up inside of her because somebody's telling her she can't smell the lotions. Right? And I don't know how many of you ladies might react the same way. You know, really big on, on smelling stuff. I don't, I don't know. All right? Uh, so, as they continued to talk, finally the lady left, and she reacted in a peaceful way in front of her daughter. She was very happy with herself because she did it this way, and she didn't want her emotions to run wild on this Walmart employee. Besides the fact that she wanted to be a good example for her daughter, it's just lotions. People get upset. People, I, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I've seen people every once in a while, they've gotten in trouble because they've acted like a fool inside of a store. And they have to make them leave. They have to haul them out because they're ranting and raving over the fact that something wasn't right that they perceived to be right. And you and I cannot do this. We can decide to change our behavior in a split second. We can choose our battles. We don't have to react negatively to situations. We need to keep our peace, keep our mind stayed on Him. Yeah. The second thing is we need to commit ourselves to God. Not only are we supposed to be in a situation where we allow God to work in us, but we need to commit ourselves to Him. When we ask Christ into our hearts to forgive us of all the things that we've done wrong, to forgive us of everything that we have done, to allow Him to control our lives, we have made a commitment. We're telling Him that you have control of this steering wheel, that you have control of this rudder, that you have control of this plane, that you have control of this thing that's spinning out of control. I'm giving it to you because I don't know what to do it. I just keep driving it in the ditch. You now have control of it. And I will follow you. It's a good thing to give God control. It's a great thing to give God control. It brings peace. When we fight to have our own way, it brings turmoil. It brings chaos. Psalm 35, excuse me, 37, 5 in the, in the New Living Translation says, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him, and He'll help you. I used to tell my kids when they would take tests, I would say, Make sure when you've studied that you would pray. I would tell it to Carrie more than anything because she was really the only one that studied. I would tell uh, all, all, of, all, all the rest of them, we need to know. All, all the rest of them uh, would just kind of make it through. And I would tell them, make sure you pray, because if you pray to God for Him to bring back to remembrance things you don't study, even God can't do that. You guys miss. Anyway, you guys miss. He's not going to do that for you, right? You and I need to commit to the Lord. You can say, hey, God, I don't understand what you're taking me through. God, I don't understand what, I'm, what is happening here. I'm not sure, but I know that you're with me, and I trust you, and I want you to help me to be wise. I want you to help me to make the right decisions. I want you to help me to say the right things, ask the right questions, do the right things. God, you're for me. Your plan is for me. You're never going to lead me in the wrong direction. You're always going to lead me in the right direction. So I pray and I trust today that God, in the midst of what I'm going through right now, that you will show yourself, as you always have, faithful to me. And you will do it because you've committed your life, your heart, your mind to Him. Committing our life to God means we're going to obey Him. We're going to trust His Word. We're actually going to read His Word. Do you know obedience brings blessing? You know that? You want blessing? Obey. You want turmoil? Don't obey. You want strife? And you want to continue to have baby mama and baby daddy and all this kind of stuff? Just don't obey. But if you want blessing, if you want peace, if you want joy, if you want the fruits of the Spirit, obey. Then you and I need to lean on God and hopefully and, and hope confidently in Him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 
Again in the Amplified, it says, Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Hello? Don't rely on your own insight or understanding. You should underline that. Lean not, I think it says, in the NIV, probably even in the King James, in the New King James, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Lean not on your own understanding. So don't lean on your own insight, on your own understanding. In all your ways, no, recognize, acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain your path. I don't know about you, but I do not like looking like this. <laughs> confused. Okay, I don't like looking confused. Like I don't know. Like I don't understand. And some people, they, they, they will talk to you and when I get done, I'm like, huh? What? What did they say? I'm confused by what they said. being 
and, 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 and being to live by, I want you to live by faith and leaning and trusting on Him and not on your own understanding. There's a place with God where you and I have to come like a little child. We have to come innocently. Children who are raised in a secure environment feel safe. They don't understand everything, but they know their parents love them. They watch out for them. They trust them. They don't have to figure out everything because that's their parents' job to figure it out. This is true with our God. This is true with our Heavenly Father. I don't understand everything He does, but I trust Him. I don't understand every place He's going to send me, but I trust Him. I trust that He is going to provide. I trust that He is going to give. I trust that He loves. I trust that He cares. And I just lean on Him knowing that if I fall, He has a hand there to help pick me up because he loves me and he cares about me. Peace in our kingdom is not an absence of conflict. Rather, it's the assurance that in the middle of conflict, God has everything under control. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to do it yourself. There's nothing in the Bible that says that you and I are supposed to know everything. Matter of fact, it says quite the opposite. Get comfortable with saying, I don't know. Get comfortable with saying, I don't know. And if God wants me to know, he's going to tell me. And until then, that's enough for me. All this said, every day the enemy is working to steal your peace, my peace. Because when we lose our peace, we start getting into emotions and we start making bad decisions. We start saying things that we don't mean and saying that we don't want to say and doing things we don't want to do. And it goes from bad to worse. Peace should rule like an umpire. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace, soul, harmony, which comes from Christ's rule, act as umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds. In that peaceful state, to which, is, to which, as members of Christ, one body, you are also called to live. And be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. An umpire in a game decides if a player is in or out. Peace is to be the umpire that decides if there's something that should be in your life or out of your life. Let the peace of God rule in your heart, in my heart, like an umpire. Let it decide what should be there and what should not be there. Let it be the finality of every question that arises in our lives. If it's going to bring me peace, I'm for it. If it's going to bring turmoil, I'm against it. Learn how to zip our lip. First, uh, First Peter three ten. For let him who wants to enjoy life and see good days, good whether apparent or not, keep his tongue free from sin, from evil, and his lips from guile, treachery, deceit. Let him turn away from wickedness and shut it. And let him do right. Let him search for peace, harmony, undisturbedness uh, from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts, and seek it eagerly. Do not merely desire peaceful relations with God, with your fellow men, and with yourself, but pursue, go after them. We need to learn how to sip our lip, and we need to learn how to chase down peace. We need to learn how to be quiet when we're supposed to be quiet. And we need to learn how to seek for peace. We need to learn to refuse to live any more days outside of a peace that passes all understanding. You want peace? And you've not done anything to get it? You blame your circumstances. We blame people. We stop allowing things to happen. Remember, it's a choice to be at peace. It's a choice that we make in our lives. Lastly, how can I have more peace? Don't, don't always take inventory of everything that is wrong with you. You can be there all day. Hello? Don't take an inventory all the time of everything that is wrong with you. face our faults, but not focus on them. We need to realize and admit to them, even our faults and our failures would distract us and detach us from growing in God. Learn to talk back to the enemy, because he talks to you. Stop comparing
comparing yourself to other people. Stop putting your confidence in outward things, in position, in work, in family. The creator of the universe loves you. He loves me. If people don't like you, maybe they have a problem and it's not you. If they don't like you, they miss out on a great relationship. Start letting up, stop letting other people run your life and start being led by the Holy Spirit of God. You will never have peace within your heart and be bold enough unless you're led by the Holy Spirit. Listen to what God says about you in His Word and not what people say about you on the street. Let go of the past and press forward toward the future. You can't be at peace with people until you're at peace with yourself. And you can't get along with others if you don't get along with people. I don't know about you, but I want peace. And the last little phrase I want to give you, no peace equals no power. No peace, no power. I don't know about you, I want the power of God in my life. Man, I want it to radiate from my heart. I want it to change what's inside of me and take this broken, wicked person and make it right and true and loving for Him. I don't know about you today, where you're at, but I hope that you will allow God's peace to reign over you. We have communion. And we're going to take it today. You have an opportunity to come the way we do it here on Saturday, Sunday morning compared to Saturday night. Is we have just a, a little uh, cups. You can take them with you and throw them away. But you can come and get you a, uh, some bread and come or a cracker and get you some your juice. And I'm going to pray over it. But we, Jesus said we're taking this so that you and I can remember his death. That every time we do it, we're to remember him. In the, in the Corinthian church, they basically were having a party. They were getting drunk. And they were eating just out of their minds. And Paul tried to tell them, listen, it's not about the fact that you're having a party. It's about the fact that you didn't even approach this whole thing. You're doing this not even thinking about the Lord. Examine yourself. Why are you doing this? Why are you participating? So today you have an opportunity to do it. As we pray, Lord, I come to you today thanking you for who you are. Thank you for the Son that you gave on the cross for our lives. Thank you for the pain that he suffered so that we wouldn't have to. Thank you for the penalty of sin, death, and the grave, and the shame that we would have had to bear that he took all upon himself. I pray, God, that you'd bless the juice, bless the bread. Take us, Lord, and use us, and give us perfect peace. In Jesus' name.
Because you are worthy of it. 